Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, former president of the Concerned Citizens Movement does not support Dennis Byron helping Dominica advance the electoral reform process. An uncertain future for Dominica's only toilet paper factory three years after production halted. And Dominicans urge to make the welfare of senior citizens a priority amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The details of the news coming up. Flow. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. The Concerned Citizens Movement is not happy with the Prime Minister's latest announcement on government's efforts toward electoral reform. The Prime Minister announced on his weekend program that Cabinet had approved the decision to have retired Chief Justice of the CCJ, Sir Dennis Byron, as the sole commissioner to advance the process towards electoral reform. Sir Dennis is expected to begin work this month and wrap up at year-end when he will present his report to Cabinet. Subsequently, Parliament is expected to take up the recommendations for implementation. The immediate past president of the Concerned Citizens Movement, who has been advocating for electoral reform, says the Electoral Commission and not the Prime Minister should take the lead on this matter. The Prime Minister has already started on the wrong footing because the Constitution of Dominica, and that is, that is what I believe each and every citizen, including the Prime Minister himself, should be going by when making pronouncements and acting for and on behalf of the citizens of Dominica, is to go through the Constitution and see what our Constitution of the land says on certain matters. And I can tell you straight off the bat, section 56 of our constitution speaks to our, our the electoral commission and its work. For example, 56.1 of the com commission speaks to the composition. Um, the, there shall be a president, a, a chairman, sorry, or, uh, there shall be a chairman of the commission appointed by the president of Dominica. Um, there shall be two members of the public appointed again by the President of Dominica, but as, as selected by the Prime Minister and also another two by the leader of the opposition or the opposition party. So that makes the composition of the, of the commission five-member team. Now that commission has a work to do for and on behalf of Dominicans in terms of putting everything and anything in place for electoral matters. So, so, so here it is. It, it, it spells out further on in 11, section 11 of that same constitution, that is section 56, 11, where it says that, and let me just, if I could get it for you, let, I don't want to read it off my head, see if I could get a quick peek at it, because I like to speak from a position of facts. It says in 56, 11 of the constitution, in the exercise of its function, and its function is the commission's function, under the constitution of the commission, it shall not be subjected to any direction or control or any other person or authority. So right there I said the constitution is, is backing me up in my statement that I made before. The prime minister is star already starting on the wrong footing where we are talking about or dealing with electoral reform. 
Dira maintains any steps to be taken towards electoral reform must originate from the Electoral Commission and not by the Prime Minister. Nobody, not Mr. Byron or anybody, supposed to impose on the Electoral Commission what to do as it pertains to electoral reform. So I'm just, I'll just ask Mr. Byron, please stay out of that domain in which the Prime Minister is trying to pull him in, knowing fully well that he would be doing something contrary to the laws of Dominica. That for sure, he coming in, he is interfering in the internal politicking of Dominica and our constitution says that no one supposed to be interfering in that way as it pertains to doing anything to do for elections. It's the commission that has that responsibility and that commission shall be subjected to no one or no other authority. The need for adult and continuing education to take the spotlight in September as the country recognizes Adult Education Month. Andrea Louis tells us more. Minister for Citizen Empowerment, Honorable Greta Roberts, says the theme, promoting social transformation, positively altering the life of our citizens, speaks positively towards the sustainable development goals which Dominica, along with the rest of the world, is working towards achieving. The third global report on adult learning and education states that as part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, world leaders have promised to provide lifelong learning opportunities for all, improve adult literacy, and foster other essential skills and knowledge. Adult learning and education will contribute to all the sustainable development goals from fighting poverty to tackling environmental degradation. The minister says government has put several structures in place to ensure the continued learning of the Dominican population. Our adult population is provided with a second chance at qualifying themselves for the workplace or for further education at tertiary institutions nationally, regionally and internationally. CSEC programs are being offered at the Dominica State Prison in order to inform and improve and build the capability of the inmates. Functional literacy continues to be one of the primary goals and the basis for all programs organized by the division. The division continues to motivate and stimulate participation at all levels of persons in the communities in order to have a more intensified adult education program. Despite the challenge caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the minister is confident that innovative practices will be employed to ensure adult education. COVID-19 has forced us to rethink and strategize to meet the demands of the public during these unprecedented times. As a result, we have utilized technology to bring our skills training programs via virtual training platforms. We thank the facilitators and participants from across Dominica and around the world who have participated in our virtual training program. Moving forward, we will continue with a blend of virtual and traditional training. An appeal to the Dominican public to ensure the well-being of the country's senior citizens amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The call from Minister for Senior Security, Dr. The Honorable Addis King, as Dominic observes the month of the elderly this month. Activities will be held under the theme, The Elderly Surviving the Pandemic. Dr. King implored citizens to play their part to safeguard the elderly during the COVID-19 era. The ministry urges all citizens to join or collaborate with the Council on Aging to ensure our elderly are well cared for during the passage of this pandemic and throughout their journey on this earth. Of Dominica's 73,000 population, over 8,000 are above the age of 65. This is a treasure and a fascinating spiritual resource. When an elderly person prays, the prayer may be short, but it touches the lives of many. In this regard, I must reiterate 
we must pay special attention and homage to our 26 living centenarians and the scores that are nearing this milestone. They must be continuously treasured and loved. The minister commended the Dominica Council on Aging for its ongoing work with the elderly and reminded the wider public to continue observing the established health protocols, especially when in the presence of senior citizens. Let us observe the Ministry of Health and Wellness and New Health Investment advocated protocols. Whenever we are in the company of our older persons, we must remain vigilant and avoid any iota of the possibility of the coronavirus getting close to any one of them. Remember, they are precious ones. The Council on Aging knows this and its members try each day to let us know how blessed they have been to care for these fascinating spirits in our midst. The work of the Council on Aging must continue to advocate for older persons in Dominica. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. or switch now to win. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Three years after a halt on production, the future of Dominica's only toilet paper factory is still in limbo. Here's Andrea Louis with more. Nature Island Paper Products, NIPP, officially began production in Dominica on 1st September 2010. The company provided employment for 16 full-time and 8 part-time staff members and was able to sell toilet paper on the local market for a lower price than that of imported products. In 2016, NIPP started the process of incorporating another company, the Nature Island People's Product, or NIPCO, to take over its operations. However, Hurricane Maria hit the country before this process was finalized. Managing Director of Nature Island Paper Products, Severin McKenzie, believes if the company received the necessary support from the relevant institutions, the toilet paper manufacturing business could be a booming one, especially in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. With the international crisis of COVID-19 and the pan pandemic, where toilet tissue has become in such demand to the extent that, to the extent that toilet paper manufacturers in the Caribbean are exporting to the United States for the first time since COVID-19, is an exact example of the opportunities that we have missed. The company was looking to diversify the products it manufactures, which would lead to an increased number of employed individuals at the factory. Another proposal that we actually sent to the Aid Bank was with the banning, the ban on styrofoam products and plastics. We saw an opportunity to get involved in biodegradable products. 
So we did make contact with some our suppliers again that we could actually start manufacturing paper cups and paper plates and food containers, disposable food containers, biodegradable food containers, which would in fact may have created increased our employment line to maybe what? Maybe 75, close to 100. According to Mackenzie, the future of the company relies heavily on a favorable response from the aid bank. However, he would like to see the youth of Dominica take over the project. I in fact approached the Dominica Youth Business Trust and I had a discussion with them where in fact I made an offer to them that would they be willing to use this as a real business for young people instead of what they have been, you know, instead of what they have been doing with this small business where they have been giving people three thousand, five thousand dollars every year and then you do not see many results. I told them, is it possible that we could, take, we could convert this company into one where young people can become shareholders, put a management structure in place, and maybe at one stage it can even become a company that could be listed on the, OES, on the Eastern Caribbean Stock Exchange. And Prime Minister Skerritt says mandatory quarantine for everyone entering the country would not be practical with the country's borders already open. The suggestion of mandatory testing for all visitors has come up because of the circumstances surrounding the country's latest confirmed case of COVID-19, identified on the 26th of August. As prescribed, the individual had a PCR test done 72 hours prior to arrival here, but the individual had to be subjected to a PCR test upon arrival here because their flight had been delayed. That's when it was discovered that the individual had the virus. While mandatory quarantine um, would, be, would be the ideal, um, that because you would certainly um, eliminate any possibility of people going out in the community with COVID-19, um, but the practicality of it is, 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 is of concern. Uh, the ability to manage this is of concern. And the fact that we have low and medium and high risk categorization uh, we are able, and if we have um, specific um, um, protocols and guidelines and, and so forth um, assigned to these particular categories, then there is really no need for mandatory quarantine. The PCR test which diagnosed the most recent confirmed case of COVID-19 was done at the government testing facility. The Prime Minister says there are some challenges there as well. The government facilities can, can, be, can be a challenge. Um, because this is essentially a hotel you're running with, um, with services, um, with, with staff, um, and then we have the challenge of people not paying for the um, quarantine facilities. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge cost to the government for meals and for accommodation, for transportation. Um, you know, so the number of issues that we have to contend with, um, but, but we, have, we believe that um, the system that we have in place, the protocols that we have in place, the guidelines that we have in place, the, um, the strict adherence to testing that we have put in place um, can mitigate against the risk uh, which um, the open order borders um, have posed. Um, it, as I said, they will never eliminate the risk completely, but if we can, if we can stick to the very strict protocols and guidelines that we've set, for, set at the airport, we can capture people at the airport. And once we capture you at the airport, um, then you will not have the opportunity to go in the community, you understand? To go into the community um, and then to interact with people and then to transmit the disease to the, to, to the virus to people. And then you have the issue of contact tracing that has to be done and, and, and so forth. And Trinidad's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, has appealed to young people there to take greater responsibility in the battle against COVID-19. The Prime Minister's statement comes in the context of a rise in COVID-19 cases among young people in Trinidad and Tobago. Dr. Rowley addressed the issue in his independence address on the weekend. I have seen that our infection rate is growing most rapidly among the younger age groups, 25 to 35. I have many times put out a call for the young people to take responsibility for this country and its future, and many have done so. Tonight is no different. 
to the young people of this small country, I'm asking you to make an immediate contribution and take responsibility for stopping the spread of COVID. This is not a trendy share of Instagram or cool forward on WhatsApp. The risk is real. We have debts and we have right now a number of citizens in high dependency care. I have seen what a contact tracing list looks like. As of Monday, 31st August 2020, there were 1,029 active cases of COVID-19 in Trinidad and Tobago. So far, 22 people have died. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. away thirty thousand dollars in cash oh, yeah. two bags of money plus a grand every friday or switch now to win. It only gets better with flu. Low terms and conditions apply. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new all-in bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. To end the news, a look again at the headlines. Former president of the Concerned Citizens Movement does not support Sir Dennis Byron helping Dominica advance the electoral reform process. An uncertain future for Dominica's only toilet paper factory three years after production halted. And Dominicans urged to make the welfare of senior citizens a priority amid the COVID-19 pandemic. You may access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.